Have you ever wondered about the parallels between two seemingly disparate religious figures? Let's delve into the intriguing concept of Joseph Smith, the founder of the LDS Church, being referred to as the Second Muhammad. It's a comparison that takes us back to the 1830s, a tumultuous time for the LDS Church. They faced significant resistance, fueled in part by a fiery sermon from Sidney Rigdon that caused consternation amongst many. Adding fuel to fire, Mormon raiders led by David W. Patton committed actions that were seen as atrocities, leading to widespread condemnation. This included the voices of two Mormon apostles, Thomas Marsh and Orson Hyde, who risked their standing within the church to denounce these actions publicly. Despite their eventual return to the church, the truthfulness of their statements was never denied. It's clear that this was a turbulent period for the LDS church, one that would have far-reaching implications. This turbulent period in the LDS church's history had far-reaching implications. But what happened when two of the church's own apostles stood against these actions? In the face of escalating conflict, apostles Thomas Marsh and Orson Hyde made a remarkable decision. They penned affidavits, formal written statements, denouncing the violent actions of the church. These were not mere whispers of dissent. They were public written declarations, a bold move, especially considering their high positions within the church. These affidavits represented a significant turning point. They not only shocked the church community, but also exposed the harsh reality of the situation to the wider public. The implications were far reaching, echoing beyond the church walls and shattering the prevailing narrative. Marsh and Hyde's actions led to their eventual resignation from the church, an extreme step that further underscored the depth of their convictions. However, their story didn't end there. In an unexpected twist, both men later returned to the church. Yet what's most striking is that upon their return, Marsh and Hyde never retracted their statements. Despite their return, Marsh and Hyde never denied the truthfulness of their statements. So why does this historical event matter today? You may wonder. The period we've been discussing has left a lasting imprint on the Latter-day Saints Church and the way it's perceived. It's a testament to how historical events can shape religious institutions, moulding their doctrines, practices and public image. Now, let's draw a line between Joseph Smith and Muhammad. Both were pivotal religious figures, each establishing a significant faith tradition. Yet their paths were strewn with controversies. For instance, Smith's leadership, much like Muhammad's, was marked by confrontations and conflicts which at times escalated to violent levels. These parallels aren't mere coincidences. They underscore the recurring patterns in religious history, where charismatic leaders face resistance, navigate through societal complexities, and eventually leave a lasting legacy. It's also noteworthy that these controversies didn't diminish their influence. Instead, they became focal points in their respective faiths, sparking debates and discussions that continue to this day. As we delve into history, we find that understanding these parallels can provide valuable insights into the evolution of religious thought and the human condition. And that, my friends, is the power and fascination of studying history. Melek ile de dua yağdurdu kularında Meydanlar toz duman oldu kularında